I'm Jeff from Turbine. I uh, wanted to share with you a little bit about what we've been doing on the research side over the you know, last six months or so. About a year ago, um, we started a, an SVM and research uh, cohort where we wanted to train um, researchers to do the important work. And in December, um, we put together a team uh, at the request of uh, Brian Long from Block Logic, who had a really interesting problem for us to sink our teeth into. And you can see from this team all the little carrots are people who are actually validator operators. Um, since we've been doing research for over a year in a variety of ways, we, um, we had a lot of people to choose from. So we really went through and said, who are the best handful of people to work on this project with us that could bring the most value and help us ship some important content and some important research for the ecosystem? Um, and during that time that we worked on this, we also had uh, a lot of help from other you know, leaders in the validator space, uh, Brian Zentetsu, Michael, Gabriel, um, and again, our own internal people who are also running validators. A um, little bit of context, like I said, we've been doing this for a while. Team construction and everything we do is very important. Um, we always like to find people on any team we build that are mission aligned, that know each other a little bit, and are complementary skill-wise. So that's how we created this team. And almost every day, my only job on this team was to say, let's make sure everything we're doing is objective, reproducible, and with a service mindset. Um, because we, we do, you know, disclaimer, we do run a, our own validator, Halyade, um, and, but at the end of the day, our primary goal in everything we do is to grow Solana and keep it running and humming faster, better, and more robustly as we continue to onboard more people into this industry. Our process um, was the problem starting with, you know, what happens if a lot of people are modifying their validator client, um, especially in the voting area, and they all do it in a way that leads to a certain amount of stake being on this modified validator client, could it halt the chain? I'll get to the actual question in a second. Um, but we went through a normal research process. A uh, number of people on that first slide um, are academic researchers uh, by training, myself included. Uh, spent 30 years in academia before retiring to do this. Can't you tell that I am retired? Um, we also built our own test cluster with six boxes. Uh, we wanted to be able to test what we were finding Yes, in a kind of clinical sandboxed area, but we wanted to be able to play with this in a way to again find, you know, objective reproducible data. Uh, we rolled with a lot of punches and then draft, revise, draft, revise. Um, you know, pure and simple, the validator's role is to vote towards consensus. That's the job. I mean, there's a lot of tech. And there's a lot of code, and there's a lot of this, that, and the other thing. But at the end of the day, that's the goal. That's the job. But it's a business. You know, you get more vote credits, you, you know, reward your users, your stakers better. You get, reward more stakers, you get more stake. Number go up, number go up. I mean, it's a business, and we respect that. So uh, throughout the whole process, we said we are not going to isolate or name any individual validators. We're not going to call anybody out. We respect everybody's right to, you know, pursue a business model that works for them. That being said, we've got to protect the chain because a LAMP port's not worth anything if the chain's not running. So this was the research, that we came, research question that we came up with, um, and it's pretty straightforward. If a lot of people do it, more than 34%, and something goes wrong, can this halt the chain? I mean, that's valid. That's objective. That affects everybody, including the people that are modifying the clients. So this is, uh, this is what we focused on, and we talked about it almost every time we met. But as you know, everything in Solana is a moving target. Okay, we were trying to solve a problem. We started in uh, December working on this, and in the interim, things like TVC came, and IVC is on the, on the docket, and uh, you know, we, we, we were trying to hit a moving target, and finally, about a month and a half before we concluded the study uh, last month, um, 
we said, look, we, we, we just got to go with what we have. We can't keep trying to research on an ongoing basis because we'll never get to any kind of conclusions. Um, and I'm not saying that we did come to absolute conclusion, um, but we're a lot smarter and we understand what's going on a lot better. Um, in brief, the history of validator voting um, behavior study, the modifications started with uh, Shinobi Systems um, modifications, which likely, and, and I talked to Zanny, you know, likely came from the discovery of some tech debt. You know, remember, Solana was launched fast. They had to get it out. There's a lot of tech debt, and thank goodness we've got uh, an elite team over at Anza that is solving this tech debt on a daily basis, and quite frankly, a lot faster than I ever thought it would happen. So we had this tech debt, and you know, Zen, you know, discovered it, and he is uh, a brilliant engineer. So you know, he was able to tool with the modifier, uh, the the um, client, in a way that was relatively safe had a safety hatch, and, you know, he came up with this mod and it helped his business. It did not put um, Solana at risk when he did that. But if 34% of the stake did that, it could have. Okay? And, you know, since then, like I said, we have the advancements of TVC. How many of you know what TVC is? Okay, good. Uh, timely vote credits. And incidentally, it was Zan who, um, who proposed that, um, incentivizing the right behavior. I mean, that's, that's what we want to do in almost any business model. We want to incentivize the right behavior. So incentivize voting fast. Make it better for the validator's bottom line to vote fast. And um, when we started to look at the data before and after, we started to see um, a progressive improvement um, to now where we could, we could you know, pretty confidently say that TVC was a success and it had the desired outcome. Other issues, though, from certain voting uh, modifications um, was the backfilling of votes, okay? And again, from tech debt. And this time around, instead of it being something that needs a SIMD, it's actually going to be a bug fix. So Ashwin's work is going to you know, fix the IVC. So we'll now have the timely vote credit, the intermediate vote credit. And so we'll see the validators voting in a timely manner. And that is, you know, again, going back to a previous slide, that is the goal. The goal is consensus, fast. So you know, during this thing that we were doing for six months, um, you know, I, I mentioned moving targets. We, we had to shelve a lot of things. And you can see, this is just a partial list of things that we have to continue to look at and research. Topics for future study. Will IVC still have the same outcome that TVC had? Okay, I'm not gonna read through all of these because the nice thing is, this is a research study that we published and it's available to everybody here. And Soon, it will be published on Harkness, which is a full uh, decentralized uh, meritocracy-based research platform uh, by Turbine. And so w this is a good example of the type of processes that are necessary on Solana to continue to move it forward. You heard about Alpenglow this morning. You heard about this this afternoon. If you're a researcher, get in touch. And with that said, I hope you all have a great rest of your night here, first night of, uh, of the event, and we'll see you all tomorrow.